touchline this is the show this particular afternoon a very good afternoon hope you're keeping pretty well where you're watching us from and keep talking to us hashtag touchline y25 what's happening in your neighborhood and a sporting affair that is taking place currently update us and of course we will tell the whole world uh, at a nearby basketball court if there is anything happening and a football match currently underway i understand this is an international break so no mm. much action as far as Kenya Premier League is concerned, but National Super League and other grassroots fixtures are underway. So we're going to speak about, you know, the state of Kenyan football uh, in the wake of, you know, Arambe Stars international friendly against Iran next week. Remember, Kenya was facing a ban over government interference with football activities in the country. So it's been a minute since, you know, the national team took part in competitive football. And of course, joining us is one relevant man who will be talking to us about, you know, the overall state of the game in the country and you know what Arambe Stars needs to do in terms of packaging going forward to ensure that you know we get to another level because we've seen Ababu Namamba CS Sports saying that you know mm -hmm. we can bid for 2027 AFCON jointly mm -hmm. with other African East African countries like Uganda as mm -hmm. we also look forward to qualifying for World Cup yeah. in 2030. I don't know how that possible is. Aaron Leg is joining us former Task FC player and he also featured for national team. Good to see you bro. How are you doing man? I'm good, I'm good. It's I'm been good. a minute. You keeping well? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, just before we started talking yeah. off air, we were speaking about a very paramount thing, value for corporate money, because there has been noise outside there that, you know, whatever corporates tend to bring in sports, especially Kenyan football, is not equivalent to the value they receive. As, as, as someone who understands, you know, <laughs> the dynamics of sports sponsorship, yeah. put things into perspective for us. Probably, I might also be one of the people who've been lamenting True. that, you know, <laughs> corporates are giving us raw deals. Mm. <laughs> What's your <laughs> uh, sentiments regarding the same? Actually, we, we, we have to understand that uh, the corporates are doing business. They are in business. They are not in the in the business of donating free money. Yes. Okay, most of the corporates have shareholders. And those shareholders at the end of the financial year will require dividends. So there is, there is no uh, manager who will, quote, donate yes. money to a football cl club just because you're a football club. Yes. You have to demonstrate that the funds that you're receiving will give a return, what you're calling a return on investment. Yes. And, and the only key point here to get a return on investment is if you have a following, if you have fans, if you have numbers to demonstrate uh, that there is going to be visibility. Number one, the first thing they look at is visibility. How many football clubs in Kenya do you think they have that data each and every match? Uh, we have the uh, number of fans who are showing up in who their matches. Up, the number of fans who are on uh, social media, the number of fans who can even uh, uh, watch football on TV. Uh -huh. These guys, the, the, the marketing manager will look for, for, for a platform of visibility. And that is why you see uh, the social media influencers are winning. Yeah, yeah. Okay? They are not winning because that he, the, the, they are just social media. Look at the numbers. Look at the numbers. They have 1 million, 2 million, 3 million followings on Instagram, on TikTok, where Generation Z is right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? You might have a following, but on the wrong platform. The target market right now, a majority of the population are between the age of 15 to 34. Okay, which platform do you think you're going to find that demographic? TikTok, TikTok IG. TikTok and IG. How many football clubs can you mention are on TikTok or IG and YouTube? Less How than, many? Less than three in Kenya. Yeah, less yeah, than maybe three. even none. Okay, what are the numbers that they have? Countable. Countable. So why would I, as, as a marketing manager, invest my company's money into, uh, into a project that's not going, not going to give me return on investment? I'll have wasted that money. So I will look for alternative avenues to invest that money. And that's why you see they are going for social media influencers. And you've mentioned about a very critical point. Because I remember when... Everton was visiting Kenya to take on Kariobangi Sharks. Mm -hmm. The Sport Pesa company that was involved in uh, sponsoring the initiative had to use some of the social media influencers just to push the agenda on social media, Twitter, Facebook, uh, through hashtags. Uh, uh, 
remember uh, Sportpesa has employed or, or, or has employed individuals who understand what marketing entails. As I said, what is the target market? Mm -hmm. Okay, the target market are individuals between the age of 15 to 34. A majority of them are called Generation Z. People were born after 1995. Mm -hmm. Most of these young men and women are on social media and they trust influencers most than anything else. Mm -hmm. They see an influ somebody who is influential doing something, they'll go and do it. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's why you see the companies like Sport Post, they've come to, they've done the, their research, they've done their polls, they've come to understand that if we use the influencers, we're going to attract the target market. Actually, you find them using an influencer with a huge following, despite, you know, lacking sporting background. Yes. But you know, because whatever you will post will have a far-reaching Yes. It's, 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 it's about the, the visibility. Even, if, even the social media accounts, there are KPIs that are used to gauge whether a social media account is performing well. Uh, number one is the number of views. Okay? I, 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 I might post uh, content on social media, uh, then there are only three li or four likes, but it has 600,000 views. Okay, it's not about the number of likes, it's the or views comments. or comments. The, 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 the potential partner is looking for visibility. Remember, he's looking for visibility. He's not looking for likes. So if you can be able to demonstrate that you can be able to give a potential partner visibility, then it will be easier for you to do a presentation and get these guys on board. Wow. Barry, you are in agreement. Uh, Yes, I am in agreement, uh, but uh, maybe I, I, I'd like to pose a question to my friend here. We, we, we are struggling with the data for numbers as, as clubs in Kenya, but uh, maybe the argument, let's say, from Sport Pesa's view is that uh, the, I remember three, four years ago when they were both sponsoring the two big clubs, is the brand, the brand value. Maybe they don't have the statistics or the numbers of fans who are following or the membership, but they say FC Gormaya, these are the biggest brands of football. Do you think they also look at your brand as a, as based on your history as well, the sponsor? You, you've used a word that, uh, if I were in your position, I would not use a brand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but for, from my perspective, a, a brand is, is, is a promise. Mm -hmm. if, if I pick uh, the two clubs that you've just mentioned, mm -hmm. if I go to, to an event, that has those two clubs, what are they promising me? Entertainment. You are sure entertainment. <laughs> how many times, how many times will you go to, 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 to a derby mm -hmm. and, 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 and the quality of play uh, is, is, is in a Does not live to the is, billing. Is, is, is in a manner that players can make 12, 13, 14 passes without either being intercepted or going out or going up in the air, how many times will you watch? Because I've, I've attended a majority of so many matches. times. Yeah. So many times, yeah. Mm. You find th th the quality of play mm. is still very low. Mm. You find our top players, whom players we consider as the top. Mm. In fact, some of them, uh, I've seen there's too much Balu about who has been selected at the national team mm. and who has been dropped, <laughs> who has been selected. Their technical ability is still very low. They are fast touch, you can see. So the quality but of... There are people we consider, you know, our cream de la cream. Yes, so the quality of play mm -hmm. is still low. Okay? We find players cannot make even six to seven passes without being intercepted. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if I, I, I call myself a brand, what am I promising you as a customer? Because you are paying money to come and watch my team play. So what am I pro promising you? Is it entertainment? Mm -hmm. No, because the quality of players you said mm. is not up to task. Okay? Will I have a good experience? No. Because I've not enjoyed the game. When I come to the study, I want to have a good experience. I want to enjoy myself. I want even to bring either my wife or my girlfriend mm. to the stadium. Or your but, kids. But you can imagine, mm. right now it's, it's the rainy season. Mm. How many stadiums in Kenya have shelters around? that you can watch a match for 90 minutes without being rained on. Or during the, 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 the cold season, I'm, I'm glad I've seen uh, Nyayo Stadium and Kasarani now the house sits. Mm. But before, mm. during the cold season, you come and sit on a concrete mm. slab that is cold. Mm. And you are supposed to bring your family members, your children, 
uh, your girlfriend over there. Remember, Kenyan football is competing with, with the other alternative uh, interests in entertainment. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So what are they doing that we are not doing? Okay, for example, Netflix. Okay? I can pay a thousand bob and for a full month. I have entertainment on my TV. Quality entertainment. Show marks. Yes. Kenyan football, if you put it on TV, the quality, does it look good? The way you will you, you, watch, for example, we are fans of EPL. Mm -hmm. There's a very big difference. Yes. Okay? And the fans around the stadium make the quality to be much better. Mm -hmm. But our stadia mm -hmm. do not have fans because we do not employ mechanisms mm -hmm. of attracting fans. For us, we believe that because there is a game, a fan should just turn up. No. We well, should promise that fan that if you pay 300 bob, you're going to be entertained. You're going to have fun. You're going to experience something that you've never experienced before in your life. But for us, we just expect that we put on a match and everybody And it will attract up. viewership. It doesn't work like that. I understand this is an international break. There is no Kenya Premier League, but we're going to slightly talk about it. What do you make of, you know, the quality of our league? Because as we speak right now, I think Gormaya is on top of the table, yeah, yeah. closely followed by Tasca no, or Nzoya, KCB. Yeah. And Nzoya started well and, you know, it's, it's, it's losing a bit of it, but hopefully they have done their best. And we've seen also how the likes of Kenya police have actively involved in strengthening their squads, acquiring mm. who and who in Kenyan football, Patrick Matasi, Abu Domar. Mm. I don't know whether they are still the players we watched a few mm. years ago. But generally, what do you make of our Kenya Premier League is not on TV. Mm. Super Sport went. I've seen uh, strategies and mechanisms of convincing pay TV back mm. to the fold. Mm. But uh, I don't know, despite absence of broadcast partner, are we, are we still there? Again, the broadcasters will, come, will only come on board if there are eyeballs mm. to watch those matches. Yes. Mm. The broadcaster is also an, an investor. He'll want to put his money into a league where he knows he's going to create extra revenue through advertising. Yes. And you can only get money through advertising if there are people watching. Yes. So un unfortunately, uh, the, the quality of Kenyan football needs a lot of improvement. Yes. A lot. There's, there's too much work to be done. There's too <laughs> much work to be done. If, if you look even at the quality of coaching, yes. the quality of play, the quality of refereeing, okay? You can the see. standards are questionable. Yes, they are questionable. If you look, uh, th th there are too many allegations of match fixing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, when I look at it uh, critically, uh, I, I see a league that whereby we, we need to start from scratch. We need to start from zero. Players' welfare is not being taken care of. Because how, how do you expect me to, 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 to come to a football match? I play. Then when I leave, I'm scrumming into the same matatu as you, who is a fan. First of all, I've put myself in risk. Because <laughs> as a football fan, I may not like what you did on the yeah. football pitch. Okay? These players need to be taken care of. Maybe first you made mistakes that costed the team. Yes. These players need to be taken care of first and foremost. Without forget about the broad, the broadcastings and and everything. If you don't take care of the needs of the players, the quality of the game will still be mediocre. Mm. And hence, the inv the broadcaster inv investor will not recoup his money. Mm. How do we expect our players to come and play when they are hungry? How many times have we seen clubs traveling all the way from Western? Mm. They get stuck in Nairobi, mm. and that is what is encouraging match fixing mm. because there is an opportunity to make money. Mm. I'm not being paid by my club. Mm. But somebody has told me, if I allow a goal, I'm going to make 10 times of what I expect to be paid by my club. Mm. Why would, wouldn't I fix that much? There's an opportunity. <laughs> okay? And, 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 and another instance is, 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 is a trigger. Remember, these footballers are human beings. Mm. A majority of them are parents. Mm. A majority of them are, 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 are have dependents at home. Yes. If, if, if you look at... Uh, they play a guardian role. Yes. 12% uh, uh, of Kenya's population is dependent on other individuals mm. for a living. Mm. Meaning that I'm depending, for example, on Sila. Mm. Okay? To survive. Mm. 
if you look within the football fraternity, most of the players who come into Kenyan football, they have three, four, five, six dependents. People look up to them for a bread in the evening. So if, if I am the breadwinner at home, my mom is there, my dad is there, my brothers and sisters are looking up to me. Remember, we, and this boy is 22, 23 years old, he's still very young. The, 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 the burden he's carrying. And yet, I'm not being paid for a full season. Okay? And f something bad happens to my family. Maybe my, my mom becomes sick. A trigger. My father becomes sick. Something spontaneous. Yes, you a trigger. Expect. And I'm not being paid. Yeah. All the first thing I'll think of. Can you look for those match fixers? Guys? <laughs> Gamblers. Okay? Yes, I, I need money. Mm. Because when you go back home, people expect you to put bread on the table. And you go back home, people have seen you on TV. Uh, they have seen some few fans, five, six thousand shouting your name. But you go back home without anything. There is no value for it. There is no value for it. So we, we, until and when we look at the issues mm. that are causing much fixing, mm. at the issues that are making players uh, get attempted to fix matches, at, at, at the issues that are making us not have quality football, the reason is why, 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 why? Mm. Mm. Some players, this, this is not to justify the match fixing saga. Some players just have integrity issues. Their personality, their background, the way they were brought, the, the up. Way they were brought up, they just have integrity issues. So for, for such kind of players, uh, what we need to have is, is have integrity tests within the KPL, within the NSL, within the football ecosystem, not only on the players. Remember, match fix is not only about the players, and that's something that a lot of people have ignored. Okay, there are officials, club officials. There are officials high up uh, uh, the football structure who are also participating directly or indirectly in match fixing. For example, if I don't pay the referees for two or three seasons, why do I expect that referee to get money? The officiating will be biased. Officiating will be biased. And our leagues, unfortunately, the football clubs, are the ones pay, pay the, referees, the referees, not the league managers. Or how, 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 how is that so? <laughs> now, <laughs> now, let's talk about, you know, around the stars. They are currently in camp at Mo International Sports Centre, Kasarani. I understand they are supposed to leave tonight or tomorrow for Tehran mm. to play against Iran next week on Tuesday for an international friendly. What do you make of the preparation so far? We've seen coach engine Ferrat. Is he called engine or engine? Engine pirate. <laughs> engine pirate. Mm. You know, he named a 30 man squad, whittled it down to 24 uh, players who will now travel for the assignment ahead on Tuesday next week. Uh, have you been impressed with the preparation so far? Um, I, 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 I will look at Harambe Stars and. and uh, in the, in, the, in the framework of talent development. Yes. Because most of these players have to come from somewhere for them to be called to the national team. Mm -hmm. uh, I keep on asking myself, what is the goal right now that K FKF has for Kenyan football? The long-term goal. You, you must have short-term and long-term goals. Yes. What is the plan? What is the strategic plan? What is the goal? Okay. Unfortunately, th th their communication strategy is a bit haphazard. So we don't know what their goal is. Okay, so you also do not understand why uh, Coach A was picked for the national team. Yeah, because I don't know the goal. Mm. Is it to qualify for the World Cup of Nations? Mm. Is, is is it to qualify for the World Cup? Uh, is it just to, to participate in, in in regional tournaments like Sekafa? Mm. Uh, what is the goal? Mm. Because and that is a very paramount. Point. Yes, yes, because. Within the framework, the Even goal... Even in life, individually, you've got yes, the goal. Yes, the goal will dictate the kind of coach that you are picking. If I look at, at, at the composition of, uh, of the collapse into the national team, I was befuddled because I didn't understand uh, what we are doing. I, I, did we pick... Uh, fr fr from the selection process, you could see them. A majority are experienced players. Mm. Okay? But most of them, in the next two to three years, they'll not be around. They'll not be around. So why are we picking these players right now? 
if they're not going to be around. The only thing I can think of is we are looking for a result against Iran and hence scale up the FIFA rankings. That's the only thing I can see from that particular squad. Mm -hmm. But looking into the future, two to three years to come, if we are to qualify for these big tournaments mm -hmm. and we are still picking experienced players whom by that time will not be in a position to serve the national team, what happens at that particular time? So as I said, what is the goal? Okay, the goal dictates the kind of coach picks. Even the selection of the national team coach uh, was, was a it brought it brought a bit of um, question marks. Question marks. Eh? Mm. If, if if you look at his at his background, if you look at his statistics and uh, again data, mm. in, in, it, it's only in Kenyan football I've seen we are not using data. Track to, record to run to, to, to run our soccer and in the 21st century right now data analytics is critical mm. okay if I look at his data I, w I won't pick him mm. I won't pick him because I know there are local coaches who have got better data than him mm. forget even about the international laws I won't pick him mm. number two after picking him uh, I look at his technical bench what value are they adding to him are they bringing experience are they bringing exposure mm. there is th th there is a talk that uh, within the technical bench we have coaches who who are very good in in, in mentoring youngsters mm. mm -hmm. that one I agree yeah. William Muluya. yes that one I agree but if you are good in mentoring youngsters Why can't you then you, the you should not be in the national team under 20 maybe mm. If you're in the national, not even under 20, because by the time you're 20 years old, you should be playing the national team. Mm. Why not give him under 17? Mm -hmm. Why not include these coaches into the talent development framework, which we don't have? So, Barry, you agree with Harold that, you know, our age-grade mm. football systems has been poor? Yes, and uh, almost non-existent. Uh, he talks about 17 and under 20. Even before COVID, the last time these teams the, were assembled to even prepare for any tournament, when was it? So I think Federation's focus is mainly on the Arambe Stars and Arambe Starlets. We don't have a particular plan, short or long term or mid term, for the development uh, of the junior ranks from 15, 17, 18, you know. And that's and a, that, supposed to be the feeder system. Yes, uh, so y how, how do you get a national team player uh, who you've not seen? You know, like for you to see them go scouting around the country, maybe in school uh, school tournaments, put them in under 15, put them in tournaments, uh, regular tournaments. Uh, but now if we don't have, how do we even now get a transition plan for the and people who are retiring? And while he's talking about the goal, yeah. whether it is short term or long term, yeah. you've been actively involved mm. in coverage yeah, yeah. of the team and attending these press conferences yeah, of yeah, yeah. the coach. Mm. At any time, mm. any time, mm. as he stated about, you know, or the federation, yeah. have they stated about, you know, the ambition they have? No, I mean, the, the federation, I think what Harold was saying was a direct, they looking, it's more of result driven. The coach maybe has a three, three year contract, mm -hmm. Uh, perhaps the next one is next year, maybe AFCON qualifies for 2025, I think. For now, he'll get a friendly here and there, and he'll try to force a result to get uh, to improve our rankings. Remember, we've been on the call for almost two years. So, but talking about future stars, the best he can do is maybe as he assembles a team, like, like what you've seen now, he picks a few, you know, players here and there that maybe have spark and maybe from abroad in the lower leagues. But we've not really heard him speak about working with even the young, young uh, under 20, under 17 systems to incorporate them into the main team. And that is- I'm told he dismissed Kenyan Premier League as now. Oh yeah, he said it's, uh, it's not physical enough, it's weak. Uh, that also tells you how his view, his vision of uh, how we- Because yeah. Gareth Southgate, in charge of England national team, <laughs> you have to work with, you know, the Premier League clubs and mm. you know the stakeholders mm. uh, involved in managing the top tier because yeah. after all we've seen like England national team the only player that uh, makes to first 11 outside Premier League is Jude Bellingham yeah. in uh, Borussia Dortmund in Bundesliga and he's 19 only and he's 19 yeah 
So that tells us that you know majority of your players, the Premier League, the top flight needs to form the basis. Yeah. Um, if 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 you look at the context in which the coach mentioned that we they are not physical. That that okay, said we are not physical, huh? mm. but I would like to, to look at the context in general. Mm. Yes. And I've explained the quality of the Kenya Premier League is still very low. Mm. Uh, the quality of coaching is still very low. Mm. Uh, the, 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 the quality of play is still very low. Mm. We do not have uh, quality personnel mm -hmm. to manage the Kenya Premier League, mm. to manage uh, talent development. Uh, to we don't even have the infrastructure. Mm. Okay? Mm. Right now, Nairobi has got approximately 11 teams, if I'm not wrong. Mm -hmm. Assuming that today those 11 teams have fixtures in Nairobi, how many teams do you think will be able to hold it? How many stadiums do we have? Double headers. <laughs> so if you look at the context in which the coach mentioned that uh, our league, the, 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 the quality of play is low, I agree with him. because He's, for, he's, he's, he's genuine. He, he's that. genuine. He's mm -hmm. genuine. And instead of us uh, critically dissecting what he's trying to tell us, Okay. We went on our boards. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we wanted to attack him. Yeah, we never take time. To we, we, we never take time to, 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 listen, to listen. There is a reason why you have one mouth and two ears. Mm. You listen. Mm. Okay. In terms of uh, personnel, quality personnel within the league, whether it is a playing unit, coaching unit, managerial unit, zero. We don't have quality personnel. Okay. In terms of infrastructure, zero. Okay, most of the teams at the end of the uh, football calendar, they will tell a player now, uh, we need to part ways because you've not performed. Mm. Okay, how do you expect a player to perform and you don't give him the tools to perform? No concrete uh, basis. No concrete basis. You don't, you do not pay him. <laughs> okay, you do not provide the right facilities. The, the playing grounds, look at it. Okay, Shambolic. yes, you don't give them football boots. So how do how do you then at the end of the of the season say that now uh, even firing of coaches the attrition rate is very high mm. we keep on firing coaches left right and center in terms of performances mm. but yet if you demand from the clubs to give these coaches and players what they are required to perform the clubs can't mm. so uh, for me I agree with the head of the national team coach that it is critical that uh, actually. During some statistics that were done, was done towards the beginning of this year, releasing a report of best ranked leagues in the continent. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. did we feature? No, I no. Think. Even even uh, Tanzania is ahead. Uh, Ghana is ahead. So of course, South Africa is ahead. The Northern African teams are ahead. I mean, we are we appearing. Are, yeah, yeah. We do we do not even have a study to host an international match. Yeah, yeah. CAF FIFA credited study. Mm. We don't have. Yeah. But we are bidding for AFCON in 2027. <laughs> uh, of course, you're going to bid for AFCON in 2027 because uh, un unlike Football Kenya Fed Federation, the government has a plan. Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, the government has the resources to do that. And they, they can make it happen. They, they'll make it happen. They'll make it happen. O o what, is, what is baffling, and I've seen it, is there seems to be a, a disconnect between the national government and Football Kenya Federation. Mm -hmm. Remember when uh, uh, the Talanta Hela uh, plan was being launched, mm -hmm. I did not see any representative from Football Kenya Federation. So mm -hmm. how do you run a football fraternity mm -hmm. without the national government? Who's going to give you the infrastructure? Who's going to give you the money? Mm -hmm. Okay, who's going to set up the policies? Uh, who's going to make the laws, for example, to combat match fixing? I mean, boils down it, to the government. It is not the responsibility of the government mm. to go and approach Football Kenya Federation. And that's why I said we don't have quality it's personnel. Vice versa. It is vice versa. Mm. It is Football Kenya Federation to approach the national government with a plan. Mm. Wow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> quality conversation indeed on this particular platform. Touchline every Saturday, one to three. We're talking matters, sporting headlines across all disciplines. Of course, we started with. Uh, rugby are now is talking about state of football in the country with a gentleman who means well for the 
game quite informative indeed. And before we wind up, of course, Barry, mm. we need to talk a little bit of Kenya Premier League. You know, there is yeah. some yeah. Uh, slight following of yeah. our top tier. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uko inje na lazima tuongele KPL. Ours been the run. Of course, our director, Abdul Razak, has done a good job, you know, trying to put up graphics of fixtures and mm -hmm. how the standings look like even mm -hmm. as we head into international break. But I understand Gurma record Premier League champions are still on top of the table. Yeah. General, what do you make of the run so far as someone who has been all over in the fields covering uh, uh, our uh, games? This season, I, in, from, my, from where I see it from objective perspective, I think it's been very tight. Even the big guns are getting, uh, which it's normal anyway, getting beaten. Um, by small teams, uh, small court in court, and uh, I think it's good for for a league to be that tight, whereby you do not expect to always go every Sunday or every weekend and get full points. So from that aspect, I think uh, there are teams that have really picked up, and there are teams that have really, uh, you know, have really been going full throttle. To, to get at least points. Yeah, because because yeah. on our screen behind we can see, mm -hmm. you know, Madara United getting yeah. beaten beaten by Bandari in the previous fixture. Ulinzi Stars drew two all. Yeah. Gene Stars Kawazito. Mm -hmm. The former Kenyan Money Bucks yeah. getting beaten by City Stars by two. One a team that was involved in, uh, allegedly involved in that match, fixing Excellent. altercation. Yeah. And we've seen Postal Rangers also mm -hmm. losing to FC Leopards. Vika Bullets has been struggling. Yeah. And they are officially relegated, right? As it looks, yeah. They're Up against up. Garobangi Sharks, they yeah. lost to them. Mm. So yeah, Sugar, which started well the top mm. tier, mm. doing with Kenya Police, which has been active on the transfer market, acquiring mm. one who mm. of Kenyan football and Sofapaka, mm. beating Kakamega Homeboys 3-1. Yeah. Yourself, you featured for Tasca FC back in the day. Mm. And... Uh, uh, they have been blowing hot and cold. 13-time mm. Kenya Premier League champions, holders of, you know, the trophy they won last season. Do you think they got what it takes to reclaim the title? Uh, being a former footballer for, for Tasca Football Club, I understand the culture and tradition of the club. Yes. Which is one thing, just to win. Mm. To win the league, winning mm. mentality has that that winning that, 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 that winning mentality. If 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 you are a player that you cannot handle pressure, you cannot play for a club like Tusker Football Club, because the the, the goal, mm. the outcome they expect at the end of the football calendar, mm. is to win the league. So uh, I, when I look at the composition of the club, I I think it's in safe hands. Robert Matano is an experienced coach. Mm. Uh, his assistant, uh, George Miner, mm. who's my senior at Tusker Football Club then, very experienced coach. Uh, Charles Okere yeah. is there, mm. fantastic gentleman, very good coach. Uh, they have the support uh, of, of, of the, the marketing department of uh, the Tusker brand. Mm. Uh, you, you, you see, uh, and, and, and you mentioned 13... Time league winners. champion. Yes. I think it is twelve. It's twelve. Oh, it's 12. Oh, FC. It's FC that is oh, FC because because when 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 we got off the FIFA ban, the national executive committee yeah. uh, annulled the, 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 league, season, the, yeah. the league of the last season. Mm -hmm. And 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 this go, go, go goes to explain what I used to say about return on investment on on, on potential partners, mm. because there are clubs that used money. Yeah. In that particular yeah. season, mm -hmm. there are investors that put their money mm -hmm. in that particular season. Mm -hmm. Then we wake up and mm -hmm. we say, because of that particular time, we were not in good relations with the national government. Mm -hmm. So we were not in office. We are going to annul the league. Mm -hmm. You can imagine the message it sends mm -hmm. to investors outside there. Yeah. That I can put my money on, <laughs> on this league. I can put my money on, on this football club. The then at the, end, at the end of the season, I mean... What we need at the Federation are critical thinkers, mm. people who have skills, yeah. okay? Project management skills, mm. marketing skills, mm. business development skills. Mm. Not people waking up and annulling the league, mm. not thinking about the consequences mm. of the message annulling the league mm. sends to potential investors. Mm. Then the same individuals who start saying that mm. Kenyan football, uh, the, the corporates have refused, 
to do what? <laughs> to join Kenyan football. I mean, you cannot have your cake and eat it. Mm-hmm. Wow. And of course, Beatrice is telling me that you want to give me the fixtures slated for the upcoming, you know, uh, schedule for Kenyan Premier League. Barry, Ulinzi, mm-hmm. Nzoye Sugar mm-hmm. will be playing Ulinzi Stars. Uh, the yeah. same day, Arab yeah. Stars will be playing Iran. And I, huh. if we had time, I'm sure Harold yeah. would have disagreed <laughs> that when we participate yeah, in the yeah, calendar, yeah. there need to be a break even for top tier. Mm-hmm. Kabebangi Sharks will be mm-hmm. playing Mazito mm-hmm. the following day. Talanta up against Postal Rangers, FC Leopards against Bandara, then Viga Bullets will be, you know, entertaining Gold Maya. So far, mm-hmm. we, as we wind up, we got one minute. Mm-hmm. The top tier, where are you placing your money? Uh, for these games? For the overall winner? I, God seems to have a slight advantage. Uh, but Tasca and Police have a game in hand. So watch that space. God has five points advantage, but Tasca and, and Kenya Police have a game in hand. So it's going to be tight. Anybody who fumbles, and I hear just breaking news that in the next few weeks, Omala is going, Pirates are coming for him. So, go so, to yeah. have a void to fill. Uh, Harold, you are parting short. We are winding up. Kenyan football in the next few years, where are you seeing it? Uh, Kenyan football has the potential of generating approximately 600 billion shillings mm-hmm. towards the GDP of this country. Football is a business. Mm. Until and when we get individuals who have got the requisite skills, the word skills is in block. Mm. Skills. Capitalized. Skills. Being a former footballer is just an added advantage. It yeah. is not a skill. Yeah. Business development, project management, uh, critical thinkers, communication skills. You listen more. You mm. need more advisors. You listen more than, mm. than the way you, you talk. Mm. Until and when. And it can be done. Mm. We can be able to create a lot of jobs. Yeah. We can be able uh, to, 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 to support the national government when it comes to expanding the tax bracket. Yeah. So uh, we need to look at football from, from a business perspective. Football from a business perspective, the parting shot and you know, final sentiments of Harold Ndege, former Task FC player and featured for the national team slightly, was joining us this particular afternoon to talk about you know, state of Kenyan football in the wake of you know, Arambe Stars friendly up against Iran next week on Tuesday, coming your way at 7 p.m. East African time. Of course, that game coming. Uh, following one year of Kenyan absence in international competitive football after, you know, that ban imposed by World Football Governing Board FIFA over government interference with football activities. We continue talking. The show is coming to an end, but of course the conversation continues. Hashtag Touchline Y254 to Asike Maxwell na pia tunaenda Mandonga kuona Mandonga muti kazi. Pale Kasarani Gymnasium, of course, is up against who, Barry? Martin Kiakuzi, that's the Uganda. Martin Kiakuzi, the Ugandan international. Yeah. Tanzania, up against Uganda. But of course, there are other many bouts where Kenya yeah. is involved. Don't go away, stay tuned. It's the touchline, and of course, we come to an end, but we continue talking. It's been amazing and pleasure having you on board. Continue, you know, enjoying the rest of our programming. Thanks for tuning in, and have a blessing weekend.